the, uh, the engine blew on the truck. So, um, praise the Lord, it happened there and not somewhere else like Memphis or uh, Lake City or somewhere very far off and in the middle of nowhere. But uh, Pastor Price's dad was able to come back, pick him back up, take him back to the farm. And uh, so this week he gets to rebuild his engine and uh, Lord willing, he'll be with us shortly. So uh, I expect him to be back probably midweekish. So hopefully he'll be back soon. And uh, continue in your prayers for them. We prayed for their safety Wednesday night, and God provided for it. Um, uh, anything can happen when you're driving down the road, and God took care of them. So uh, thank the Lord for oh, that. That you've experienced the love of Jesus Christ. Here we go this morning on number two. to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verse 35. The Bible says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Let's pray. God, please be with me as I preach, and please uh, fill me with your power, and help me to uh, preach your word uh, faithfully and clearly. Please uh, be with all of us as we hear your word. Help us to let it change us, and to let it work in us, and help us to trust in you, our bread of life for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. See, at the beginning of the chapter, John chapter 6, verse 1, the Bible says, And after these things Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes, and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. And Philip answered, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. And one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here, which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that, sat, that were set down, and likewise the fishes, as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said unto the disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above them that they had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. We see here at the start of the chapter the miracle of uh, the feeding of the 5,000. The multitude comes to Jesus and... Uh, as he teaches them, the people uh, become weary, 
and uh, they get hungry, and most of them had come from quite a way and hadn't really brought much in the way of provisions particularly. And uh, one small lad with five loaves and two fishes brings them to Jesus, and uh, Jesus miraculously multiplies the bread and the fishes so that the entire multitude is able to eat. And not only did the entire multitude eat, but there were uh, 12 baskets left over of the fragments of the bread and fishes. So there was enough for uh, a whole lot more eating to be done later. It was uh, quite a miracle which Jesus did. It was quite amazing to the people. And they said, this is of a truth, that prophet which should come. And they wanted to make Jesus their king there that day. And uh, Jesus leaves the people. Instead of accepting their uh, bid to become their king, he leaves the people and uh, departs from them. Well, <coughs> after this, <coughs> um, in verse 24, the Bible says, When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. When they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves, and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. We see here a little bit of the revelation of why Jesus didn't accept the people's offer to make them king. What they were interested in was just the uh, loaves and fishes. What they were interested in was the physical. What they wanted was just what they could have, what they could hold, and what they could see. And Jesus uh, commands them this. He tells them to labor not for the meat which perishes, but for the meat which perishes not, um, that which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man, that is himself, shall give you. And they ask him, in verse 28, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? And here they ask, What are the works of God that we can work them? And they don't quite understand what salvation is about. They think of it as a work. They want to work some kind of work. So Jesus tells them in verse 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Salvation is not by works. These people wanted to reach. They wanted to achieve everlasting life. They wanted to get it by works. They were concerned with the physical. Their eyes were on that which was physical. They wanted the loaves and fishes. They wanted to work the works of God to get everlasting life. What they did not want to do was believe. Belief and works are two things which are always opposite. Now, good work should follow belief. And it is expected, and uh, but um, good works do not produce belief. Good works do not produce salvation. Um, these people here were seeking to work the works of God, but what they really wanted to do was uh, just look good in God's sight, perhaps. They, uh, they weren't really interested in what God really had for them. And oh, uh, if... I'm sorry, I forgot to dismiss Children's Church. I just realized that. When I came up here, I realized there was something I was missing. Uh, Children's Church, if you'd like to be dismissed at this time, uh, feel free to. I'm sorry I meant to dismiss you earlier. I knew something was off. Anyway, um, well, as I was saying, uh, um, before I uh, interrupted myself, um, the people were interested in uh, that which was physical. They, they were interested in working the works of God because they wanted God to be impressed with them. The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And uh, we see in verse 27, Everlasting life which the Son of Man shall give you. It is a gift. It is to be a gift. And um, it... Uh, it is not something which a person can work to achieve. But the people didn't want to understand this. 
When we see that their problem with not understanding isn't because they...